Josh Haston here, Israel Uncensored, Land of Israel Network at thelandofisrael.com. It is the 7th of January, 2018, the 20th of the Hebrew month of Tevet. Hope you're doing well in your part of the world. Get in touch with me during the week, Josh, at thelandofisrael.com. On Facebook, it's Joshua Haston, and on Twitter, at Josh Haston. Hope you're doing well. Hope you are surviving what I understand is extreme cold temperatures if you are in North America. We had our own winter storm here in Israel over Shabbat. It's always good to get some rain. And if you're down in Australia, I understand you're going through extreme heat. So a lot of crazy weather patterns all over the world. But here in Israel, saw the images of the uh, different uh, uh, rivers flowing through the deserts, through the Negev and the waterfalls. And we really, really appreciate the rain. So thank God we got some rain. And anyone who out there who was praying for rain, we thank you because it looks like it worked. Thank God. Um, we have a great guest here on the show today, Maurice Hirsch. He has basically dedicated his whole life towards seeking justice, putting the bad guys away, whether his uh, through his 19 years as the IDF military advocate general corps, including the director of the military prosecution in Judea and Samaria. That was his military career or now in his civilian life. He's the head of of the legal strategy department for a very important organization, Palestinian Media Watch. Those who listen to the show know I reference them almost every single week in terms of the incitement and hate and hatred rather coming out of the official Palestinian authority and their media outlets and the education system and everything going on in the PA and social media now, of course. He's also, on top of all that, he's a senior military justice consultant for NGO Monitor, another very, very important organization. He joins us here now in person. Maurice Hirsch, thanks so much for being here on Israel Uncensored, Land of Israel Network at thelandofisrael.com. Hi, Josh, to you and to all the listeners. Um, We're going to go right to an op-ed you have in today's Jerusalem Post. Remember, today's the 7th of January. You're probably listening to the show now on the 8th of January. And the op-ed that you penned talks about recent legislation approved by the Knesset in its preliminary stages Um, in regard to the death sentence for terrorists. Now, and I'm going to quote here what you say, this uh, legislation passed again in its first reading in the Knesset, um, in theory provides the basis for a court to hand down the death sentence for terrorists in certain cases. However, however, in reality, the suggested legislation alone will change nothing, but rather appears to be no more than irrelevant populist political posturing. Now, we had a lot of people getting... Uh, excited those who believe in the death penalty and who saw this legislation pass, but you say that this legislation is not really going to make a difference or uh, do what many think uh, it's intended to do, and that is punish those with the death penalty who carry out atrocious crimes against Jews here in Israel. If you can't explain all this to our listeners. Okay, Josh, so it's really very simple. Um, The idea is that even today there is the death sentence um, as a possible punishment already by the law that exists. The suggested legislation isn't going to change that. There's a few cosmetic changes that are suggested, but really what is lacking is instruction by the by the politicians, by the Minister of Defense, by the by the Prime Minister, to the prosecution to ask for the death sentence. Without that instruction, they can change the laws 50 times. Nothing will change. So I just want for those listeners, uh, the uh, situation here in Israel, you're saying, is we do already have the death penalty. Uh, Eichmann was uh, hung, I believe, here in Israel. He was, you know, a, a Nazi war criminal, and he was the only. I think maybe there was one other person put to, put to death back in the 40s, I believe. Yeah, back in the, it, really at the start of the state, there was another person put to death, a guy called Tubiansky. Um, that turned out to be a, in itself a catastrophe. But really, Eichmann was the only person who, put, who was put to death by a decision of the court. So if we have that on the books already, and Eichmann was put to death, and you know, for those who are listening, I myself am in favor of the death penalty for the uh, atrocious crimes, those who carried out the atrocious crimes, the terror attacks, you know, whether it's against uh, the, the carried out in Chalamish and Nevei Murder the the murder of the uh, the Solomon family or the Fogel family. Or you take your pick. Unfortunately, you've had too many people murdered by these jihadists. I I'm in favor of it. Um, so what you're saying is they actually right now, if they wanted to, uh, our uh, elected officials could put to death those who carried out these atrocious crimes without everything going on this week. 
without question. They could uh, just instruct the, the prosecution. These are the crimes for which we would like to see the death penalty. These are the crimes for which, given a conviction of the terrorist, the death, sent- the death penalty should be requested of the courts. That can be done today. The problem is that today it works bottom up instead of top down. Um, in my position as the, the head of the prosecution, in June 2014, if you, if you remember, three uh, uh, teenage boys were kidnapped here in Gush Etzion, um, and they were subsequently murdered by members of the Hamas. Before they were killed in, in the attempt to arrest them, I had already written a draft of a recommendation to request the death sentence. These were people who had gone back to kidnapping Hamasniks, that had gone back to kidnapping Israelis, and had thereby started a war while in the course killing three children. So I thought that they would really be uh, uh, um, relevant for the death sentence. So let's take that case as an example, uh, those Hamas savages who murdered our three boys. Why didn't they get the death penalty? Well, it wasn't that they didn't get the death penalty. They were killed try, uh, um, trying to arrest them. So really, th- one could argue that they did get the death penalty, um, just not through the courts. Okay, so that's that's my mistake. I, I um, you know, unfortunately, there's so many different attacks and you get confused from time to time about which terrorists carried out what attack. But if we want, we can take another example. I mean, uh, give an example of somebody who's now sitting in jail who possibly should have gotten the death penalty but is not going to or received a sentence of life in prison or, um, in other words, is still in in jail. And my fear is that even the, the hardness of criminals can still be released in a future prisoner exchange, uh, give an example of somebody who, who that, you know, in that scenario could play out and they didn't get the death penalty, perhaps uh, in a case that you were seeking the death penalty and the reasons why they weren't in fact put to death for these heinous crimes. I think really the, the, when you're talking about the people who are, who are appropriate for the death sentence, you can look really at those terrorists who have received possibly more than 20 life sentences each one. People like Abdallah Barghouti, who was convicted and sentenced to 67 life sentences. He murdered 66 people, um, the additional life sentence for all the other attempts. Ibrahim Hamid, 54 life sentences. Hassan Salame, 44 life sentences. These are mass murderers, mass murderers that were proud of what they did, and their only request was to let them kill more Jews, just because they're Jews. I think these people should definitely be a, a potential uh, uh, for the death sentence. But they were already convicted a while ago. Um, possibly now the Khalamisha uh, uh, murderer should have been considered for, for the death sentence. At the end of the day, he carried out the attack, as he said himself, as a response to the security measures imposed on the Temple Mount as a result of the terrorist attack on the Temple Mount. Um, really, you're killing three people in their homes, Friday night dinner, Shabbat table, celebrating the birth of a child, um, and as a response to the, the actions of, 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 of the government of the state of Israel. That's, that's I think, clearly a, a potential death sentence case. So what has to change? You end your op-ed in today's Jerusalem Post. You say, to make real change, real decisions must be made. What are those real decisions? What has to change? Well, really, what needs to change is that the government needs to uh, um, come to a decision that they believe that Israel should be one of the countries where, given the severe terrorism that we're subject to, that Israel should be one of the countries that has the death sentence, not only in theory, but actually in practice, Um, making it an imminent reality, which I think would would convey a tremendous message to also to the terrorist public. If you if you remember the pictures of of Marwan Barghouti, for example, the argument is that death sentence doesn't really uh, uh, it doesn't act as a deterrent. I, I would say that that's not right. Not every terrorist comes to die. Some of them just wish to kill as many people as possible and then carry on fighting. Marwan Barghouti, this big popular, popular leader, if you remember the pictures of his arrest, he came out of his rabbit hole wearing nothing but his tidy whities he, he was completely humiliated, but he was willing to suffer that in order to live on, to fight another day, to kill more Jews. Yeah, and he's still uh, committed to that cause. And you have people, unfortunately, who actually think he should be the leader of, of the Palestinian Authority, not that Mahmoud Abbas is... Uh, is any better as a, as a saint, the financier of the Munich massacre and all the crimes and and uh, the things that he does on a daily basis in the Palestinian Authority to incite 
yet you have people who want to see these types of individuals, Barghouti, as, as a future leader in the Palestinian Authority, just to give you a sense of what we're dealing with here in Israel. So I, I hope that there are you know, those changes that you call for. I hope that is the reality. I'm, I definitely disagree with those who think that uh, the death penalty is, is not a deterrent. I think it is a deterrent if they know that this is what they're going to get you know, uh, you know, each and every time that they carry out this type of heinous uh, crime. I want to move now to the other work that you're doing. And we mentioned before that Palestinian Media Watch, that important organization. What I tell my listeners all the time, I say, you know what? You don't want to listen to commentary. Uh, don't listen to commentary. Just listen to what Palestinian Media Watch is saying, what they're doing in terms of translating uh, Arabic into English, Arabic into Hebrew, and then into other languages to get a real sense of what the Palestinian Authority is teaching the next generation of kids growing up in that area, whether it's through social media, the education system, television, radio, how they're inciting on a daily basis. Don't listen. You don't want to listen to spin or any other anybody else's commentary. Just listen to what they're saying. I mean, it, it's so obvious what their goals are and their intentions are in the Palestinian Authority just by listening in Arabic. We know what they say to CNN is one thing, and then when they talk to Arabic uh, to their own people, they say another thing. So tell us if you can right now, what, what's the latest that you're working on at, at Palestinian Media Watch? I know it's a daily, a daily, uh, you know, their daily updates in terms of the situation. Who's listening to you guys? Do you believe that um, somebody up there in the, in the top echelons, whether in the Israeli government or perhaps in the American administration, is taking what you guys are translating, what you guys are putting out there to heart, and, at, and is it actually making an impact in terms of impacting uh, an impact on policy when it comes to dealing with the PA who you know, we still consider our peace partners, but in reality, they're inciting to murder on a daily basis. What's the story? So really what we've seen uh, um, over the, just over the last year is, is, is tremendous impact, specifically on one of the, the, the main subjects that Palestinian Media Watch has been working on, for many, many years, and that's the PA paying salaries to terrorists. Um, that's seen a tremendous change in the last year with the Taylor Force uh, uh, Act being, uh, uh, being passed, at least uh, uh, um, by both houses at the moment, um, with the Israeli legislation that's also being passed. Really, the world sitting up and saying, this is something that we don't want to see anymore. Um, they've been saying the same thing with glorification of terrorists. Um, a tremendous uh, uh, success that we had recently. Um, that started with something very, very little, showing the world that the Palestinian Authority had used money given by the UN and by foreign countries to call a woman's center after Dalal Mugrabi, the murderer of 37 people. That really started a huge chain event, um, investigations by the Scandinavian countries. The UN immediately asked for its money back and condemned the, the incident. Um, the, the Scandinavian countries and Switzerland have really pulled out um, of supporting all of these organizations, just recently reported. So we've seen tremendous impact there. Um, but really what you were saying from the start is, is right. When you're looking at the Palestinian Authority, just listen to what they are saying, not the Hamas, the Palestinian Authority, the central line of the, of the Palestinians. All they're talking about is the, what we call the four-point plan. Deny Israel's right to exist. Maps all over the place, all over the Palestinian Authority areas that show that Israel doesn't exist. When you're talking about a two-state solution, it's clear that they aren't interested in a two-state solution. All they see is Palestine from the river to the sea. Glorification of terrorists. That's what they do all the time. And, when you've, and, and hate speech, which they add on, means that you have a population that believes that all of Israel is, belongs to them, that the people living in that area of thieves and parasites. So when you really call for incitement, it's very easy to send the people out to kill. Very similar to the Nazis and the way that they worked. First, indoctrinate your people, then send them out to kill. And the salary is really is the end result. Then you then reward them for doing what they've been told to do. And it would seem you have the attention of the President of the United States, President Trump, tweeting just several days ago, uh, talking about cutting funds for UNRWA, uh, for, you know, all of their, uh, you know, really their their education uh, that they provide to the PA and the indoctrination and the incitement. You know, I, I would give you guys the credit. I would say that's your doing. Without question, with UNRWA, it's, it's, it's a huge story. UNRWA really teaches the same curriculum as the Palestinian Authority. Even UNRWA has admitted, as reported in the Palestinian media, 
that the curricula of the Palestinian Authority breaches their duty of responsibility. They're really teaching the next generation, they've taught all the generations until now, hatred. They're not teaching peace. They're not teaching conciliation. They are really cementing and fermenting every bit of hatred that, that, that's around now. And the U.S. is really provides a quarter of UNRWA's uh, um, annual budget. And by saying that this can no longer go on, really, the president of the United States is making the best decision. That is supporting peace. Nothing else than that. Supporting peace by stopping teaching of incitement, stopping t the teaching of hatred. That can only support peace. And what is it about? What is it about two hundred and fifty million dollars, or if not more, the U.S. provides UNRWA every every year. So the U.S. gives UNRWA over three hundred million dollars a year. A year, and that and that funding ha has to stop. And if you're talking about, you know, first of all, UNRWA, not only are you talking about Gaza, you're talking about the education in Jerusalem and throughout Judea and Samaria, but but in Gaza, I mean, you you could trade the word UNRWA for Hamas and and Hamas with UNRWA. I mean, they're basically interchangeable. We saw in the last operation how UNRWA was assisting Hamas in, in uh, hiding rockets in their facilities. And you have Hamas um, members who are working for UNRWA. I mean, aren't they you know, basically interchangeable, those two words? They really are interchangeable, even uh, uh, more so since the, the Hamas uh, uh, took the control that they won in the elections in 2006. They took control of the Gaza Strip in 2007 from the corrupt PA. And now UNRWA and the Hamas are already synonymous, one with the other. Um, senior Hamas Nikim are part of, uh, uh, Hamas members are part of the senior staff of, of UNRWA. And UNRWA teachers are really Hamas members and their families. It's the best way to, to really to, to make a living. If you're just joining us, this is Israel Uncensored, Land of Israel Network at thelandofisrael.com. I am here with... My name is Josh Haston, by the way. I'm here with Maurice Hirsch, the head of legal strategy for Palestinian Media Watch. He is also dedicated 19 years of his life to the IDF, putting away the bad guys in the IDF Military Advocate General Corps. And he was also the director of military prosecution in Judea and Samaria. And currently, in addition to his work for PMW, Palestinian Media Watch, by the way, it's palwatch.org is the yep. website. Yes. I'll watch it, Oregon. I, I say it almost weekly to the listeners who want to know about the situation here. Go check out their information and see the translations into English. Um, in your other capacity, you're the Senior Military Justice Consultant of NGO Monitor, another organization that takes a look at all of these so-called good doers and uh, humanitarians who claim they want to do good for Israel. And what we're really talking about here are uh, entities which receive funding from foreign governments and use that money to bash the state of Israel. Talk, if you can, Maurice, a little bit about your work for NGO Monitor. So with NGO Monitor, I've been doing a lot of work on the subject of juvenile justice in Judea and Samaria. What does that mean? How the IDF arrests and prosecutes Palestinian minor terrorists. Um, there are a lot of them, unfortunately. Um, some of them murderers. Um, Daphne Meir, if you remember, just, uh, uh, um, just about two years ago, was murdered by a 16-year-old Palestinian kid, um, Yanai Weizmann, similarly by 14-year-old by Palestinian kids. The Palestinian kids, based on the incitement that they have, go out and commit murders. Um, and then you have this plethora of, of, of NGOs um, who are attacking Israel, saying that the way that Israel enforces the law against these minors breaches international law. They're all working under the auspices of UNICEF, the UN Children's uh, uh, Rights Organization, um, funded by them, and really what they're doing, they have one goal and one goal alone, and they don't care about the truth on the way. Their goal is to have Israel blacklisted on a list of the UN Secretary General, which would then be the basis for uh, um, having sanctions set against Israel for breaching the rights of the minors. That's their only goal. They're willing to lie, distort the truth all along the way, and I sit, and based on my experience, I ran the talks with UNICEF um, in, my, in my previous capacity, and now I sit and write responses in English to all of these re reports so that someone who's really interested can actually see the other side and hear the other side and where they're, where they're distorting the truth. And I don't know if this is a, a case that you're dealing with now, but in the news over the last week, and I think she's dominated the news, unfortunately, even more than the Iranian protests in the Western media, uh, is this, uh, what do they call her? I forgot her name, Shirley 
Shirley Temper, Temper, Temper. yeah, Shirley Temper, the the girl who's basically dedicated her teenage years to uh, uh, attacking idea of soldiers physically and trying to create an entire, uh, trying to change the narrative really to make the IDF look like this big, bad, horrible army that, uh, you know, tries to attack little girls. But she's really part of a, a big conglomerate, really, of, of a terrorist family who have dedicated themselves to uh, bashing the IDF and, and trying to make the IDF look bad. Are, are you guys dealing with this case? And even if you're not, if you can, just uh, clarify the situation with this uh, this actress who Israel has arrested now for attacking an IDF soldier. So really what we're talking about is Ayat Tamimi. Ayat Tamimi, uh, just to give you a breakdown of the family, her father has already been convicted for organizing the children of the village that they live in to ambush Israeli soldiers. Really an ambush, that's the only way you can call it. You have one group of children that runs towards the IDF soldiers, throwing stones, drawing them in, and two groups of children on either side of the forces running in that are then going to pound them with stones. That was what her father did, um, convicted of that already, I think, three years ago. Her mother has also been, uh, has also been indicted for attacking IDF soldiers. That's what they live and breathe in that family. They believe in violence against IDF soldiers. They claim to be peaceful uh, uh, activists. Between them and peaceful activists, there's a whole abyss. Whilst they're always hailed to be a, 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 a peace a, a, a activist, uh, like I said, the, 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 there's nothing at all possible that can be seen in their actions as, as peace, peace activism. What they do enjoy, however, is tremendous financial support from abroad. Um, these are people that don't appear to have worked a day in their life, um, and yet they travel all over the world, um, giving their talks to whoever they want to speak to. Um, really, a 15-year-old girl, 16-year-old girl that's meeting the, 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 the PA president um, that's now the celebrity all over the world. All she's done is be violent. And that's what's made her famous. If that's what the PA and the, and, and the, and the Tamimis want to do with their children, that's very sad. And if I'm not mistaken, she has another relative, an aunt or a cousin or whatnot, who's related to the, uh, who's linked to the Sabaro bombing as well, the pizza shop bombing. I don't know if you heard that. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I mean, the, the, the wider family, you've got a, a, another guy, Nizar Tamimi, who was already convicted in 1993 of kidnapping and murdering a soldier. Um, Ahlam Tamimi, um, that's the, the Sabaro bomber, um, who, who gave an interview a few years ago while she was still in prison with really a, a, a sardonic smile that she just prayed that she could have killed more children. Um, that's, that, that, that's the environment that she grows up in. These are, these are sick individuals, and unfortunately, the Western media and many have been duped into thinking that these are some, in some way, human rights activists. And, uh, I mean, these are horrible, horrible individuals, and, I mean, they should all be locked up. And while we're talking about the foreign-funded uh, NGOs here in Israel, um, I don't know if you saw the news yet today, but the foreign ministry just came out, or I believe the Ministry of Strategic Affairs just came out with an entire list of uh, NGOs who Israel has decided to ban from coming into this country, including, I believe, uh, JVP, Jewish Voices for Palestine, an entire list who I don't know how they're going to be able to vet them at the borders, but they've been banned. This is just, I don't know if you saw this, this happened just this afternoon. A whole list just came out of these organizations who, again, hide under this guise of being human rights activists and uh, you know looking out for the, the lives of the Palestinian, so-called Palestinians and whatnot. But they are now banned officially persona non grata here in Israel. I don't know if this is something NGO Monitor has touched on or that you're familiar with, but if you can, comment on uh, this new strategy of banning entire groups, entire uh, delegations of these haters from even setting foot in our country. So I, I, I really think, I can't really speak for NGO Monitor here on, on that subject. I, I, I really don't know. Um, I know that in, in general, NGO Monitor is in favor of allowing freedom of speech. Um, but there is a limit to freedom of speech when people, when the only goal of these people is to come into Israel to, uh, um, to spread their hatred, to spread their lies, and to then go back to wherever they came from to continue spreading the same lies. I think it's probably a smart move to say that there should be some type of restrictions on who can come into the country, who you're willing to accept, and who you're not willing to accept. 
So if you just check it out, it just came out today, this, this entire list. And you know what? And I, I think I posted something just a while ago on Twitter. I'm also in favor of, of freedom of speech. But if you see some of the images, you know, with these groups who claim to be out for the rights of the Arabs in this area and whatnot, yet you see pictures of them. I just saw on Twitter of them with Hezbollah flags in their offices and and all these types of terror organizations who they really support, uh, and they claim that it's all about Israel's so-called occupation, and they throw these terms around, and it's only about the settlements and, and all these other things that they claim to say, yet when they're having their demonstrations and they call from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free, uh, you know they're talking about the destruction of the state of Israel. So Israel, again, taking action today and saying that these groups, and there's a whole list, you can go online and check it out, uh, will be banned from our borders. We'll see how that plays out. We'll see if if the, perhaps I'm sure it'll be taken to a higher level of court here in Israel. We'll see if the uh, the court agrees with that government decision. Time will tell. Um, I think that's uh, really all the time we have for, I want to thank Maurice Hirsch, the head of the legal strategy department of Palestinian Media Watch and a senior military justice consultant, NGO monitor. Again, as I said, putting the bad guys away as a career soldier and now fighting the same fight here as a civilian in the field. I want to thank you for your time and wish you much success in these important endeavors and keep up the important work you're doing. Thanks for having me, Josh. And that's a wrap for today, ladies and gentlemen, for January 7th, 2018, the 20th of Tevet. 5778 here from Gush Etzion, Israel. Hope you are doing well. I just saw the most beautiful sunset over the Gush. It was a bright pink sun, and uh, it's only something you see here. I know you see, you, you see beautiful sunsets everywhere around the world or wherever you're listening right now, but tonight's sunset here in Israel was something to behold. So get yourself over here as soon as you can. Come visit us here in the Holy Land. And uh, just going to give you the way to get in touch with me one more time. I appreciate each and every email and all the messages you send. I'm happy to read your comments about the show on the air. I like the show, hate the show. If you have a question for any of the guests, if you want to get in touch with Maurice. Uh, actually, Maurice, how do we get in touch with you? What's the, best the best way to, uh, to get in touch with me, with me is via my email. It's very simple. Maurice, M-A-U-R-I-C-E, at patwatch.org. Get in touch with Maurice, or if you want to get in touch with me, Josh at thelandofisrael.com on Twitter, at Josh Haston on Facebook, Joshua Haston. I'm happy to, to put you in touch with Maurice or any of the other guests we've had on over the weeks. Um, signing off for today from Gush Etzion. Most importantly, between now and when we speak again next week, everybody out there in the wonderful world of ours, be safe. Shalom, shalom from Gush Etzion, Israel. <laughs>